In this module, I'll look at how Platform HPC makes it easier to monitor and manage cluster resources. I'll start by logging into the web interface. What I see once I log in depends on my role. I'll log in as an administrator. Once logged in, I see the resource dashboard. This gives me a convenient way to assess the health of the cluster at a glance. I can see alerts and warnings, see any hosts that are down, and see how busy the cluster is. The appearance of the web interface can be easily changed to represent my own organization's branding. I can change logos and color schemes right from within the web interface, and advanced users can modify style sheets to alter the appearance further. In this demonstration cluster, I have three hosts with six cores. All are up and running. I also have some alerts that need attention. I'll look at alerts later in the module. Platform HPC is aware of resources like CPUs, memory, and storage. It's also aware of graphics processors, or GPUs, increasingly used to accelerate specialized GPU-aware applications. Key GPU metrics are exposed through the web interface, and Platform HPC can schedule GPU workloads to ensure optimal resource sharing. These dials show at a glance CPU usage, disk usage, and how many of the cluster's available job slots are occupied. I can check the health of the cluster's master host or head node by placing my mouse over the master host icon. I'll close this cluster health view and move on to the cluster performance graphs. Here I see graphs that represent CPU use across the cluster as a whole, as well as total memory usage over the past 15 minutes. I can select other graphs by clicking on the Show button. I'll monitor average load as well. Trend lines on this new graph show CPU load averaged over the last minute and also over the last 15 minutes, giving me a clear sense of cluster load. I'll track job slot usage as well. All job slots are full processing jobs. I can see that just a few minutes ago there were no jobs running. I can also look at these measures over different time periods. Activity has been increasing over the last hour. I'll close the cluster performance view. Platform HPC provides several different logical views of the cluster. We can also visually represent where cluster nodes sit in data center racks. As clusters get larger, being able to see rack placement makes the environment easier to manage. If we start to see nodes in a particular rack location overheating, for example, this might point to a problem with a fan and help us more quickly localize the problem. I'll go back to my small demo cluster. The CPU usage is the first monitored metric for each host. One of our compute hosts is highlighted as being very busy. A second host is so busy that it's triggered an alert condition. If I had a large number of compute hosts, the condensed view would be a more convenient way to view the cluster. I can also look at cluster hosts in an even denser heat map view. I can easily select the parameters I want to monitor visually. I can monitor metrics including disk I.O., swap usage, GPU temperatures, GPU counts, and more. I'll monitor disk I.O. as the second parameter instead of temperature. I should see the second monitored parameter turn green for each host as long as I.O. levels are acceptable. Placing our mouse over any status indicator shows us the monitored values. For convenience, common administration functions are available in a common tasks pull-down menu. From here I can do things like add hosts, configure applications, or configure how cluster hosts are provisioned. I'll look at some of these tasks shortly. If so configured, I could even directly access built-in Intel Cluster Checker utilities through the web interface. This is a powerful diagnostic tool for clusters built in accordance with the Intel Cluster Ready specification. It tests clusters thoroughly and quickly pinpoints problems. Let's show another view of the cluster by selecting Hosts in the Resource tab. In this view, I see more detail about each cluster host. The top half of the display shows a list of hosts and their status, while the bottom panel shows full detail for any selected host. I'll select the first host called Compute000. I can add new hosts from here and have them automatically installed using my choice of provisioning methods. I can also assume secure shell access to any cluster host. By selecting the OS button, I can shut down or reboot hosts selectively. In Platform HPC, all management functions are nicely integrated. From a Workload Agent menu, I can start, stop, open, or close hosts from the perspective of the Workload Manager. This makes it easy to take cluster nodes down for maintenance without needing to learn the administrative commands associated with the Workload Manager. 
Platform HPC also makes it easy to manage the software personality of cluster hosts. From this menu, I can reinstall, replace or remove cluster nodes, relocate them to different racks or rack locations, or assume console access. I can customize the information I want to see about each host, and for larger clusters, I can filter the list of nodes based on various properties to make them easy to find. I'll select the Performance tab in the lower panel to see performance details for this node. I see graphs similar to what we just saw in the dashboard view, except in this case the measures apply to just the selected host. I can see jobs running on any host, along with information about who the job belongs to. We'll spend more time in the next module looking at jobs and applications. Let's look at how cluster hosts are provisioned using Platform HPC. I'll open the Host Provisioning menu. This exposes a number of options like provisioning templates, libraries of software kits, repositories, and options related to automated host repurposing. I'll cover software kits first. Platform HPC software is provided in kits. Kits are essentially smart software packages that know how to install and configure themselves and that understand their own software prerequisites. They also know the types of cluster nodes they're meant to run on. For example, when installing complex software like a workload manager, some software needs to be installed on the head node, while different software needs to be installed on each compute host. Kits contain the scripts needed to appropriately install and configure the software based on the configuration of the cluster. I can add, remove, or upgrade software kits right through the web interface. Even whole operating systems are treated just as special kind of kits in Platform HPC. To give an idea of how kits are structured, I'll quickly look at the Nagios kit. Nagios is a popular open source system monitoring tool provided with Platform HPC. This kit is meant to be installed on 64-bit hardware as we see here. It supports multiple operating systems. Templates refer to the types of nodes on the cluster that the software is meant to be installed on. I don't need to understand all this as an administrator because this knowledge is built right into the kits. Let's look at the software components that are part of this kit. There are three distinct components one that runs on a master Nagios node, another that runs only on a monitored compute host, and a support component required on all hosts. Each component is installed on a particular type of node and is configured automatically. The fact that configuration is automated reduces administration effort dramatically. Now let's look at provisioning templates. Provisioning templates define exactly how different types of cluster hosts are to be installed. Platform HPC natively supports three different provisioning types, package-based, diskless, and image-based provisioning. In addition, a provisioning method called multiboot allows compute hosts to reboot and run a different operating system from a separate disk partition. This feature is commonly used to switch hosts automatically between Windows or Windows HPC and Linux, depending on application demand. The workload manager in Platform HPC supports both Linux and Windows operating systems, allowing heterogeneous clusters to be managed as a single shared resource pool. Templates called Dual Boot Linux and Dual Boot Windows are provided with Platform HPC for this purpose. Let's take a minute and explain how this works. In some environments, users need to run both Windows and Linux applications. This often leads them to deploy separate siloed clusters. This is an expensive and inefficient solution. This problem of silos is not particular to Windows and Linux. For example, some applications might require a particular Linux distribution or kernel, so it's possible to have siloed Linux clusters as well. Platform HPC solves this problem with automated host repurposing. The cluster can adjust its own configuration based on workload demand by rebooting nodes to provision the correct operating system. This increases efficiency and helps reduce cost. We won't go into this in depth here, as we have a separate demonstration that shows how this adaptive clustering works. We're back looking at various definitions for provisioning templates. Using the buttons at the top of the screen, we can create our own templates to provision hosts with the operating systems and layered software we prefer. I'll modify the template definitions for a Red Hat 5.5 compute host to show how templates are defined. For each provisioning template, we provide general information about the template. As shown here, templates draw software from repositories that are based on underlying operating systems. The template also defines a host name format. I'll select Components. On this screen, I can select the software that will be automatically installed on host provisioned using this template. These components come from the installed kits that we looked at earlier. 
By toggling the view, I can see components that are not selected for installation on compute hosts. Notice that only the software components meant to run on compute hosts are selected by default. This idea of being able to control what software is installed or not installed just by checking or unchecking boxes is powerful. This is one of many things that makes Platform HPC clusters so easy to manage. If I don't want to have Nagios agents running on compute hosts, for example, all I need to do is uncheck the Nagios component. If left unchecked and saved, the next time the cluster nodes were synchronized, the Nagios monitored node component would automatically be deinstalled from all hosts governed by this template. The Packages tab allows us to select the OS level RPMs to include in the same way. I'll skip this in the interest of time. The disk layout is also specified as part of the provisioning template. If we have nodes with different sized disks, for example, we could copy this provisioning template and have another similar template for nodes with different types of disks. This is an important capability because it gives us the flexibility to deal with clusters that have different types of node configurations. I'll select Partitions. This screen defines the disk layout for nodes provisioned using this template. I can add or remove disk partitions. If I significantly change a disk partition, effective nodes would automatically be reinstalled to lay out the disks differently. If templates change such that hosts need to be updated, sync required will be set to yes on the provisioning templates dashboard. We can either choose to synchronize nodes immediately, or we can defer synchronization to a logical maintenance period. For those familiar with competing cluster managers, a nice feature of Platform HPC is that many operations can be performed without the need for any downtime. For example, if I'm just adding or removing software packages, the cluster file manager built into Platform HPC can make these changes while the node stays up and running processing work. Some cluster managers require a complete reprovisioning operation whenever even minor changes are made. Let's conclude our discussion on provisioning by looking at repositories. Repositories are anchored around operating system releases. They contain software kits appropriated to the operating system version. A nice feature of Platform HPC is that it can support multiple repositories. This means I can easily deploy cluster nodes based on different operating systems and operating system versions. This is an important capability because it essentially takes the risk out of software updates. I can deploy a new operating system or a new set of kits to the cluster, and if something goes wrong, I can simply roll back the changes by provisioning nodes from an earlier version of the repository. As an example, let's say I want to apply the latest patches to my operating system using YUM or Red Hat Network. First, to make sure I retain an unpatched version of the repository, I can take a snapshot. Now I have an identical copy of the repository stamped with today's date. Now I can safely patch the repository. If new operating system patches introduce problems with layered application software, I can simply revert to the previous unpatched version of the repository. This takes a lot of the risk out of patching or upgrading software. As I mentioned earlier, I can have multiple repositories based on multiple operating systems, and each repository can have different collections or versions of layered kits. I can include or exclude a kit like GPU-aware scheduling in the repository just by checking or unchecking the checkbox, similar to the way that we assign software components to provisioning templates. I'll close this window now. Before I wrap up this module, I'll quickly look at alerts in Platform HPC. Under Resource Alerts, we can create our own alert definitions and monitor triggered alerts. I'll look at the alert definitions first. Alerts can be configured at either the host level or for the entire cluster. Administrators can add, remove, or modify alerts. They can also be enabled or disabled. I'll modify a host level alert that notifies me when CPU utilization exceeds 95% on my cluster's master host. Alerts are easy to configure. I can define different levels of alert to differentiate events based on their seriousness. I can also specify the conditions under which alerts are triggered. Administrators can design their own scripts to be called when alerts are detected or modify supplied scripts. Alerting is extensible and monitored parameters can be customized. Platform's HPC alerting is easily integrated with packages such as QLogic Fabric Manager and Terrascala's management solutions to provide visibility to alerts from third-party software. Now I'll look at triggered alerts. As alerts are triggered, a running summary is maintained for me. I can acknowledge alerts to prevent them from being triggered repeatedly. 
For any triggered alert, when the alert is selected, I can see a history in the lower panel of when the same alert has been triggered in the past. As I take actions to correct alert conditions, this helps me determine whether my activities are being effective and whether problems are becoming more or less frequent. Let's summarize some of the key cluster management features in Platform HPC. First, Platform HPC provides a next generation interface that is exceptionally easy to use. As we've seen, everything is integrated and I can perform all management tasks through the graphical environment. Monitoring and reporting are built in. Administrators can easily graph key metrics and use color-coded indicators to monitor GPUs, CPUs, or resources like memory or disk. Platform HPC is GPU aware. This means I can treat GPUs as scheduler resources and monitor GPU-related metrics helping me get work done faster, avoid errors, and increase utilization. Platform HPC can repurpose hosts based on changing workloads with dynamic operating system reboot. This makes sites more efficient by adapting cluster resources to workload patterns. It also saves costs by avoiding the need for expensive siloed environments. I hope you've enjoyed this quick tour of Platform HPC's management capabilities. Thank you for your time.